Riddle me this, church girls. Why do you feel the need to be a grown man's mama? I just wanna know. Yep, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Thou shalt not try to be a grown man's mama. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be our summer series. Thou shalt not, and thou shalt. Thou shalt not try to be a grown man's mama. Yep, welcome back to Church Girls Wanna Get Married To. My name is James Hilton Thompson, and if you have not subscribed, please be sure to do so, and please share and tell a friend. Yep, we're gonna talk about Thou shalt not try to be a grown man's mama. Ladies, summer is here. It's beautiful. Look at the sun coming through my window. It's just so pretty and it just makes my skin glow. You know, I don't like sun so much. You know, you know, it's summer. And so we have to get things in order and perspective. I hear. So many of my single sisters say, well, I met this nice guy, but you know, he doesn't have a job. And maybe you can help him to find a job. Is he your son? Excuse me. Is he your son? Why do you feel the need to help a grown man? If you have met a man who is not where he needs to be for you. Drop him, move on. Because then you will get into mommy mood. Okay? Oh, I can help him to get a job. You're on the internet looking up for a job, doing his resume for him, driving him to the job interview. You're probably sitting right next to him doing the job interview because what you're hoping is that he will become a the man that you need him to be so he can be the husband you want him to be. And see what usually happens is you fix him up, you build him up, you help him to find a job and you help him to become a man and then he leaves you and go find another woman who can appreciate him for the man you have made him into be, to be, and then you come back crying to us, talking about, oh, how could he do that to me? I love him. And he had no job. I helped him to find a job. I did his resume. I paid all the bills. I let him live with me. I bought him clothes and food. And then he got on his feet and he left me. Go find him another girl. Yeah, that's because that's what sons do with their moms. Okay. That is what sons do to their moms. My little boy is four. I'm raising him along with my husband. Thank you, Jesus. To be a man. And I'm going to help him with the college offer paperwork. I should in another video. He already has his college fund growing. So when he's ready, college is paid for. He's going to private school his whole life. I have a little account to the side. Every month, lose something going there. Because I've Helping him, my son now, my son. And then I'm going to help him with the college education, with the transcripts and with the applications. And I'm going to help him to find a job. And, you know, he's going to be president and all. And when he has grown up to be a man, and my husband and I have helped him, helped him to become a man, he will then leave me, his mama and his daddy, and go find a wife who will appreciate him for all the hard work that I put in him. So you're crying about why he left you to find another girl and marry her in six months? Because when moms are finished raising their sons, their sons leave to find wives who can appreciate them for the man you built them to be. That's why you don't help a man. If you met, if you meet a man who is not where you need him to be, where you want him to be, leave him. This is why data gathering is important. What is dating? Gather data that you need to make an informed decision. 
dating is also the process of elimination. So if you meet a man who you like, I don't know how you like him, he ain't got no job, what is there to like? And he doesn't have a job, he's not where you need him to be, you need to help him, you need to fix him up, you need to build him up to become the man you need him to be so he can be the husband to you, you run, you leave, you run. That is why data gathering is important. That is why you do not meet a man and jump in an all-out relationship with him without the data. You need the data, okay? Get the data before you jump in head first. Talk about you in love. In love with what? Oh, I feel sorry for him. How do you marry a man and turn your life over to a man? and submit to a man that you feel sorry for. That makes no sense to me. And then you cuss him out and talk about, I built you, I made you. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be nothing. You don't need to marry that man. The man you build, that's not a man you need to marry. You build him, you leave him so one of my sisters could get him, okay? Do not build him. Don't fix him up. If you feel sorry for him, that is not a man you, you have to marry. If you do not admire, the man you marry is a man you need to admire. I admire him. Oh, he's so brilliant. He's so handsome. I admire him. I look up to him. I love talking to him. He's so smart. I respect him. I submit to him because unlike what the church has taught, Submission is not so that he can lord over me. Submission is so that he can love me and provide for me and protect me. I'm submitting to his ability to provide for me, to protect me, his ability to love me. That is what I'm submitting to. I'm coming under his provision of love and protection. That's what submission is. So you feel sorry for this man that you need to build up. You, you need to help him. You need, I need to help him so he can become the man I need me so he can marry me. And that's the man you want to marry? No, ma'am. Don't do it. Stop, stop, stop trying to be a man's mama. He's grown. If he's 40, I'm 42. Okay, so basically I'm going based on my age group. I got married when I was 30, almost 36. I met my husband when I was 34. I got married at 35. See there? There was no, he didn't drag it out. He said he knew in two months he was going to marry me. Don't take six years, seven years, 10 years, 25 years, 35 years, 50 years. No, we don't. Okay? If you meet a man that you have to help, that is not your husband. He ain't husband material for you. Because you know why you're always going to throw it back in his face, how you build him and made him and helped him, and how you respect somebody like that. Because see, men and women, we love differently. We love our husbands by respecting them, by submitting, by listening to them. We honor them. That's how we love them. So talk about, oh, but I love him. I love him. No, no, no. Love to a man. Honor and submission. Okay, that's what love is to a man. Love to a woman is professing his love, taking me before church, pastor, pastor, all my family, and profess his love. I, Michael Elias Thompson, do take you, Janice Andrea Hilton, to be my lawful wedded wife profess. Okay. He loves me by taking me before God, church, pastor, and my family, and marry me, and profess his love for me, and provide for me, and protect me. That's how he loves me. Yes, we say it, but love is an action word. Husbands are to love their wives like Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He died for her. And so husbands have to be able to die for their wives, die to their needs, die to their wants, 
die to the desire to run around and sling it all over the place. Die, die, die. That's how husband love us. And how we love them, respect and honor and admire. I admire my time all the time. I admire him. Oh, he's so bright. I said, you know I'm married because you're so smart. You know that's why I'm married. Mm -hmm. So ladies, if you have to help him, if you have to fix him up, if you have to help him to become the man, you need to be, before you can marry him, that ain't your husband, send him on over here and to my, one of my church sisters so I could hook them up. But you know, he got to be a good man. And many women get disappointed because, oh, he left me to go be with somebody else. Yes, because that's what little boys do. That's what sons do when their their mamas finish raising them. They leave their mamas and go find a wife who can appreciate them for the man that we've made them to be. So when you take a man and you fix him up and build him up and think he's going to turn around and marry you and he leave you and go find Susie Sue and marry her in three months and then you start crying and calling him, a uh, you know, the animal word. I got something coming on that. Is your fault? You played the mama role. Sons don't marry their mothers. Sons leave their mamas and go find a wife to marry. So when you play the mom role, guess what you will have? A son. Don't be mad. Wise up. Stop being a mama. Be a wife. Proverbs 18:22. He that finds a wife. Finds a good thing. So that means you need to be a wife. My daddy always tell me, be a wife when he finds you. Proverbs 18, 22, who so find a wife, find it a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. Don't be a mama. Don't be walking around in these streets talking about you're going to fix him up. If you have the fixing up mentality and the fixing up spirit and the fixing up attitude, guess what you're going to attract? You are going to attract a man that needs to be fixed up. See, I was a wife, so I attracted a husband. If you want a husband, you will be a wife and attract a husband. So I know you're crying. I know it broke your heart. But girl, you was playing his mama. So that's why he left, to go find him a wife that can appreciate him for the man you've made him to be. So stop being the mommy. Stop being a mama. The only male, male you're supposed to be a mom to is your son or maybe your adopted child or something like that. But a grown man? 40, 50 year old man? No, ma'am. Bye. Uh -uh. Gotta go. I got to go, girl. I love you. I love you. Share, subscribe, and remember thou shall not be a grown man's mama. Now, check back for the rest of my thou shall not. Okay. Love you, girl. Bye.